Hey guys, what's happening? I'm Jim. Thanks for coming back. This is episode seven of my Luminar AI tutorial series. So far we've covered like the catalog, the getting started, the templates, lots of different things. Uh, last video was about the essentials tab because we're in the editing module. Today we're in the creative tab. Let me show you a photo. Here we go. This is something I shot in Bratislava years ago. And to be fair, I went ahead on this initial tab on Essentials and used the Composition AI tool to fix the verticals, straighten the photo, things like that. Otherwise, I've done no editing, so there's my before and there's my after. Now, the Creative tab is a lot of fun. As the name implies, there's a lot of creative tools that you can use to edit your images, lots of different fun stuff. And there's also some changes from how Luminar 4 looked if you happen to use the previous version. I'm gonna, again, just like the last video, this is not a deep dive on any one of these tools. This is an overview of everything that you can do. I'm gonna run through these kind of quickly. Sky AI is renamed. It used to be called AI Sky Replacement, but you choose the sky. I'm gonna put in a night sky, let's say. And there we go. I've now turned this into a night photograph, which actually looks kind of cool. There are a number of skies built in, which you can choose from. The only thing I recommend is perhaps consider getting some sky packs or taking photos of the sky for your own use simply because the amount of skies included while it's a nice variety is not enough if you do this a lot to really keep your photos from ending up looking the same in other words you don't want to just create the same look every single time I don't think so just consider that the point is you can do this it's quick and easy it's really great around the edges as you can see You've also got a number of advanced settings to make sure that the sky fits cleanly and clearly into your photo. You can defocus the sky, you can add haze, you can change the temperature, the exposure, things like that. I'm gonna hit reset, again, not a deep dive on that. I will cover that in more depth in a future video, but it's a very popular tool from Luminar 4 and it's renamed. I find that it's working just as well and maybe a little bit better than it did in Luminar 4 in terms of getting along those edges. Next up is augmented sky. Same basic idea, adding something to your sky. You choose an object. I'm just gonna choose an Aurora Borealis, and you can see how that drops that into the sky. Kind of fun. You've also got other things like clouds, an eagle, fireworks. So let's say I wanted to add fireworks to the sky. You can see how that works. You can also place the object. You can see it shows up here. You can shrink that and you can move that around if you want to. So actually I think maybe over here it looks better something like that, and then you just click place object again, and there it is. And once again, you've got various controls for lighting, warmth, and then advanced settings if you need them. Again, just another fun creative tool in Luminar. I'm gonna hit reset, and we're gonna move on to Atmosphere AI. Now, I've already done a video about Atmosphere AI. I'll put it there, but it's a cool way to add various atmospheric effects to your photos. So you have fog, layered fog, mist, and haze. And so you just choose the one you want, drag the amount, and you can see kind of how it impacts the photo. And then depth, basically this tool is AI based as the name implies, as were the first two that I just demoed. But this one basically recognizes the depth of an image and this depth allows you to pull that fog closer and closer to you. So you can see how that's operating where it's just in the sky and now I'm pulling it forward in the photo. If I try layered fog, for example, you can see how that's operating kind of down there along the street. Now it doesn't really look good in this photo. Something like that would look better on a landscape. I just wanted to demonstrate how that works. Something fun, something creative, as the name implies, and something cool you can do to your photos. Next up is sun rays. Similar as in Luminar 4, you click place sun center, you choose where you want it to be. And again, this is kind of a night shot, so it doesn't really make sense. I'll drop the sun over there. Turn that off, turn on the amount, and you can see what it does. It just brings in sun rays. You can change the overall look, the length, the penetration, which is how deep into the photo they come. And then you've got various settings for the sun, the rays themselves, including the number of rays, if you really wanna make it a superstar burst, and if you wanna randomize the pattern, and then you can adjust the warmth of it as well. Again, doesn't make sense on this photo, but it's something that's really cool. And there's a couple of different ways you can use that. I've actually taken sunsets where I have a sunburst, but it wasn't powerful enough to my taste and stuck this on top of it and basically accentuated one that's already there. And also you can, as you can see here, there are street lights. You could place a sun center on a street light in a photo and make that pop as well. A couple of ideas for you, and that's something fun and interesting you can add to your shots. Next up is dramatic, and as the name implies, it does add drama to your photo. So again, I'm just gonna drag this pretty far to the right, not what I recommend doing on every photo, but you can see it creates a little bit of a washed out kind of look, reduces that saturation, increases the contrast, and really pops some of the detail as you can see. So there's the before, 
and the after. I actually think it works really well on some photos. It doesn't look that bad here. I mean, it's a little bit too much, but you know, that's obviously just something you control with a slider. You've also got brightness and saturation that you can adjust if you choose to. Once again, I'm gonna reset that and go to Mood. Now, Mood is the new name for the LUT tool that was in Luminar 4. So you can choose your LUT. LUT, by the way, stands for Lookup Table, and it's basically a combination of edits. Many of these uh, have an impact on color. So you can choose your LUT. The nice thing about it, as you hover over the LUT, you can see what it's doing to your photo. So maybe I like this Los Angeles one, for example. I can apply that, adjust the saturation and contrast to my liking, as well as the amount of that LUT on the photo, and very quickly take a photo from that look to that look. It's a nice, powerful, and fun way to adjust colors in an image. Another thing to be aware of is there was a cross-processing tool in Luminar 4. It is now in the LUT tool, so you can come down here. And some of these I used quite a bit in Luminar 4, and I will use quite a bit in Luminar AI as well. Like Seattle, for example, I use that a lot on twilight kind of photos. It adds a nice little bit of bluish and kind of magenta tint to an image, as you can see as I hover over that. It's great for accentuating that post-sunset kind of look in my opinion. You've also got various film looks and things like that. So again, something fun to experiment with. Every photo is different. There's no, you know, this one always works great or whatever. It's just experimentation. See what you like and apply it to your images if it makes sense. Okay, toning is here now. It used in Luminar 4. It was called split toning, which is what it's officially called in the broader photographic community. And in Luminar 4, it was on the Pro tab, but it's over here now. Toning, I'm gonna call it split toning forever, so just know that those two are interchangeable. It basically separates highlights from shadows, lets you pick a color and a saturation amount for each one. So in order to turn it on for either highlights or shadows, first you gotta drag the saturation slider. So I'll usually drag that a little bit, and then your hue is up here. You can choose what hue you want, and in fact, I'll just drag saturation really high so you can see how it's impacting the image. Now keep in mind, I'm only on highlights, so the dark areas of shadow are not being impacted by this color change that I'm doing. As I hover over or slide this hue shift slider, you can see what's happening. Actually, that looks kind of cool. That's popping up some of the light blues, which is giving a little bit of that blue cast to the building. So if you look at the before, it's taking away some of that warmer tone and adding a little bit more of that kind of bluish look. Doesn't look bad. Um, and as I continue to go, you can see how you can impact the colors pretty significantly. Again, I've got saturation really high. I don't necessarily recommend that, but every photo is different. On a sunset photo, I will often have my hue over here kind of in the warmer tones and the saturation somewhere that fits with the photo. It'll help pop those warmer tones in photo from sunset. Shadows works the same way. Pick a little bit of a saturation level and pick a hue. I'll often go bluer or cooler in the shadows simply because I kind of like that and do something like that. And then at the same time, I may go a little bit warmer in the highlights. And you can see it's having a big color impact on the photo. There it is before and there it is after. I'm just kind of creating more richness and intensity in those colors. It looks okay on this photo, not amazing. It just depends on the shot as to what you do, but it's a powerful tool that allows you to separate highlights and shadows. And then the balance slider just is, do you want more of the highlights or the shadows kind of look applied to your shot? Matte look is next, and that's a fun one. And as I drag this to the right, you can kind of see what it does. To me, this is kind of the vintage slider, something that I use sometimes, not a lot, but it has a really cool effect. And of course, you can create additional fade. So if you like to simulate some kind of faded, kind of vintage, maybe a film kind of look, you have that opportunity with this tool. And then there's also color toning that helps you pick a color and a range for that color and make some various edits that uh, impact the overall look. I'm just kind of winging it here so that doesn't necessarily look good. I'm just trying to give you an idea of what the tool looks like. Again, really good for vintage kind of looks, uh, film looks, things like that. Okay, Mystical is next. This is pretty much one favorite of just about everybody that had Luminar 4. It does a great job of creating mood and a little bit of drama. As you can see, it creates some kind of what I call soft glow, for lack of a better word. It kind of creates, you know, it does create some contrast, creates a little bit of mood. You can adjust the shadows if you want to bring those up or reduce those. And it just kind of softens up the photo overall. I think it creates a little bit of a dreamy look. So to me, this is kind of the moody, dreamy kind of tool. And I like to use that on a lot of my photos. You can see a before and after. That's pretty heavy handed in terms of how much I've used here. But just to give an example of how it works, I think it works really well on photos at the edges of the day. So sunset, golden hour, 
you know, blue hour, twilight, things like that. I think it adds a nice bit of mood to a photo. And also I think it works really well on landscapes. Okay, Glow is next. And this Glow tool, I've had a lot of questions about, hey, Jim, where's Orton? I don't see Orton. It's gone. What happened to it? Orton is not gone. It's here in a drop-down menu in Glow. So you've got basically four different options here. Orton is one of the most popular, and I'm going to go ahead and drag that as well. You can see what that does. It creates a little bit higher contrast image, but it does create a little bit. I call, I call it a glow. And you can go read about the Orton effect if you'd like to. It's common across lots of different software products, but you've got advanced settings here to really control how that looks on your photo. And if you don't want Orton, maybe you want soft focus, you know, as the name implies, it just kind of softens up, creates a little bit of, you know, again, kind of dreamy. So what I often did in Luminar 4 was I would take Mystical and then pair that with Orton and create a little bit of a dreamy kind of look. Experimentation is your friend. I recommend doing that and checking things out. Every photo is going to be different, season to taste, the usual kind of thing. And last but not least is film grain. As the name implies, you can add grain to a photo if you're going for that film look. I think it goes really well with matte. And that's a great thing about Luminar. You can just use these filters. And in combination, you get some very powerful results. You can choose the size and roughness. I will admit to not being a film grain kind of person, not something I really ever use, but there's nothing wrong with it. It's totally cool. It's powerful. And I think it looks great on certain photos. It's just not something I typically do. But having said that, this creative tab with all these tools, very powerful, a lot of fun things you can do. I recommend experimenting. And I also recommend, by the way, with Sky AI, if you're replacing the sky, I recommend doing that and then going to essentials and kind of working through some of the adjustments there. I like to get the new sky in and have that paired up before I go and do additional edits. But other than that, I generally start in the essentials tab, then move to creative. If it's a portrait, of course, I would start there uh, and then go to pro if I need to. But that's my high level summary of the editing tab and the creative components within it. Hope it gives you some ideas and explains some of the tools. I'll be back as I continue to work through my various tutorials for Luminar AI. I'll do some deep dives on some of these tools and show more about how they work. That's a high level summary. I hope it gives you some ideas and some insight into how they work. And thanks for watching my friends. You guys take care of yourselves. I'll see you in the next video and adios.